Welcome to part 3 of how to make a smoke particle effect in UDK. Now we're going to start actually making the particle effect. So we're going to go into the content browser, right click, and select new particle system. I'm going to give this a name. And now it opens up Cascade. Now, right now, it's just emitting a bunch of coordinate points. We don't want that. We want the material that we made. So we're going to click on Required. And over here, it shows the material that it uses. We want the one we made. So we're going to go back to the Content Browser, go to Material, and click on the material that we made. Now we're going to open this back up and then click on this little green arrow button. This is going to assign what we have selected in the content browser. So we click that and now it's starting to use our material. Alright, first we got some housekeeping to do. There's some things that we can turn on that will make things easier for us. For example, use local space here under emitter. And then if we scroll down a bit, we want to make sure use max draw count is on. We want to cap that a bit more than 500, so let's put just 50. All right. And now let's go to spawn. And here under spawn rate distribution, we set how many particles it shoots out pretty much per second. For now, let's put it at 15. And then let's go to lifetime. And here we determine how long a particle lives before it is erased and new ones come out. So let's give it a min of 2.5 and a max of 3. Now let's go to initial size and for X, Y, and Z, let's give it a max of 256 and a minimum of 224. Now let's go to initial velocity. This is where you set up a lot of how much your particle looks. It determines its speed and the direction that emits the particles. So right now for the max, let's give X and Y a value of 8, and then for Z we'll give a value of 160. And then for the minimum we'll give it a negative 8 for X and Y, and then a 128 for Z. So then it basically moves along the X and Y within like a degree of 16 units, give or take. But primarily all of our particles are going up the Z axis somewhere between 128 and 160 units. So it's very much going up with a little bit of wiggle room. So it's not a completely straight column. But we don't want it to just pop up out of the same area every time. So we want to vary up to its initial location a bit. But we don't have that on our available modules here, so we need to add it. So we're going to right click on particle emitter and then go to location, initial location. And that will add the new initial initial location module. And here we can add values to the coordinates. Right now I'm giving all the coordinates in max a value of 2.